What's up, YouTube? This is Bystander X39, guys. Today I'm coming to you with my set review for Chaos Impact, the latest Core Booster set for the Yu Gi Oh! TCG, which is going to be dropping at the end of this week. All right, it's always great to see a new Core Booster set come out. Um, uh, just looking at the set itself, we're getting a ton of support for different art types right there. I mean, Gladiator Beast and the and the Test series, pretty damn awesome. I mean, Eli is getting a brand new card, equip spell there. I mean, so you don't have to just worry about Selene now getting popped. You get a new equip spell. Infinitrax, this is the support that I'm very kind of excited about um, seeing. Um, same thing with Salamang, great. So oh, we got some pretty good support from existing R-types. New support from Marin Assess, which actually takes the deck up quite a few bit of... Tier levels and definitely some unchained. This art type is actually pretty cool. All right, so let's just get into it. I'm gonna look over the set list first, and I'm gonna pull out a few cards um, that I'm kind of hyped out about. So first and foremost, I'm gonna take a look at the import, see if we're gonna be getting any stuff from Link Frames Two. All right, so we can come down here and no, nothing from Link Frames Two. I don't think Overburst Dragon was from the Link Frames pack, was it? No. No, it was. Oh, Link Frames, uh, Link Frames edition. It was, it was from a, like a special edition they released. All right. Okay. But outside of that, nah, nothing else else. I mean, okay. So... Monster Express is one of the new TCG exclusives in this set. I mean, it's a level 4 Earth Attribute Machine type of monster. You can target one face-up monster you control. Send one monster from your extra deck with the same original type as the face-up monster before the rest of this turn. You cannot special summon monsters except for monsters with the same original type, which is not bad in Infinite Tracks at all. Um, you can bury one of your Goliaths, so you would bring out one of your Xyz monsters. You could actually just trip it that off. To get it on the field, so that's another way around it. I mean, eh, interesting play. I mean, but if this gets stuff into the graveyard a little bit faster, but for the extra deck, so depending on the strategy, it might be useful. All right. Of course, we got Bulldoz Brutal Dolzer here. The thing helps me right there. All right, tribute one Earth Machine must special summon this card from your hand in defense position. If this card is Special summon from your hand. You can special summon one infinite track monster from your deck face up defense position, but except for itself and its effects are negated, and you cannot special summon monsters except for machine monsters, which is not big a deal. Um not a bad card. You can get you into your link fives pretty easy. Okay. And coming down here, I mean it's how we're gonna get Pyro Phoenix. I mean by itself, I mean Reincarnate like some of this on this return, you're nuking your opponent's board, and then you can swing big. Uh, don't finish off the opponent, target a like monster your opponent controls, bring it back, and then burn them from game, which is pretty cool. I mean, um, just on your turn is not bad. It's a great finisher, but when you come down to the quick play spell, Transcendence, just nuking your opponent's board on your opponent's turn, yeah, that can be problematic, especially if they don't have a way to continue their plays after you've basically nuked their board. So, definitely something to keep an eye on. I can see how this could potentially become problematic. Just nuking your opponent's board without it hitting your own can be devastating to a lot of different decks. All right, so that's just few, a few of the monsters that I'm looking, uh, cards that I'm looking to get out of this set. Um, now going through the stuff, we're gonna start with a new R type right here. We have the Unchained R type. Now this is a bunch of fiend type monsters. Uh, the level three monsters, both um, the twins Aura and um, Raikia. These are pretty much an engine um, for the deck. Uh, Aru is the starter of the two. Basically, you can target one card you control. You can have special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except for few monsters, um, and destroy the target card. And if you do, special summon this card from your hand. So that's the way you get it out of, onto the field. Um, and typically, you could be popping one of the two trap cards, either 
Escape of the Unchained or the Abominable Chamber of the Unchained. Primary reason is because when you destroy these cards, you special summon another entry monster from your deck. Um, so you can get this guy on the field, bring out Rakea, you have two level threes, and then you can go into either a link play or a rank three play, and you can see how this archetype does meld pretty well into Burning Abyss, since it only lies, it does lock you into special summoning fiends, but that's not really an issue for that deck. Um, they also have other effects. Basically, if this card is destroyed on the field by a card effect, except for its own effect or by battle, you can special summon another Unchained Monster from your hand or the deck, except for itself. Um, both card effects are hard once per turn, but still, it's a great engine to get things started off. Um, like I said, Burning Abyss is definitely something that I've seen people um, wanting to mix this with. Um, not bad. I mean, the other monsters in the deck focus more on link summoning using your opponent's monsters as link materials, which is actually pretty cool. The bad news is about the, lit, the primary main deck monster that can do that is a secret rare, and so are two of the bigger um, link monsters. They're also secret rare, and then the other link monster is ultra rare. So, <sighs> you can see how I'm hesitant to turn around and go into that particular element of the strategy, but just having Arua and Raikia and a Burning Abyss deck is more than enough to get an engine. The other deck that I've seen a lot of people talking about is um, utilizing this in True Dracos, and you can see how that can work, because if you use Diagram to pop one of the traps, you're basically special summoning one of the monsters from your deck to the field, and that's going to give you um, the ability to have a monster on the field to ultimately tribute off for your True Draco monsters if you're going First, if you're going second, definitely you're going to be wanting to use the field buster strategy in which you're going to be calling out that secret rare monster to basically link off with your opponent and you're going to be running more or less the, the link buster strategy with that um, in that particular deck. <clears throat> Overall, yeah, I can see how we could add a lot to Drew Draco's. Um, as a standalone deck, definitely something I wouldn't play. I've seen the deck in action. It's beneath Tier 2. Um, and I personally wouldn't want it, considering that a lot of decks can easily keep this um, deck down, held down. All right? Marion Assess picks up a lot of new support, and it actually does take the deck up to a whole new, brand new level. Marion Assess Blue Tang, this is a secret rare card, and you can see the reason why it's secret rare. It's a foolish burial for the R-Type, as well as a pot of duality, um, when it's used as a link material. Um, definitely a three of in the deck. You can, you have to invest in this card if you want to run Marion Assess. Um, Mandarin is the other card you want to keep an eye on. This is either a one to two of in your deck. The primary reason is because it does require a lot of setup to get onto the field. Um, if you control two or more Marinus monsters while this card's in your hand or your graveyard, target a water link monster. You control special summon this card to the zone that link monster points to, but you banish it when you, it leaves the field. All right, so that's why you see it's a one or two copies. Uh, Crystal Heart is definitely a Link Monster you want to pick up. Um, could offer protection to your monsters. Uh, Battle Ocean is the field spell, and this is what's really the linchpin card in the deck and gives the deck its new power play. Um, basically, all Mana monsters you control gain 200 attack, and also each one gains 600 attack for each Mana Assess card equipped to it. So, um, monsters you control in the extra monster zone that were linked to someone using Crystal Heart as a material are unaffected by opponent's card effects, so you can see how um, that works. And then, of course, when you link someone in the Marin Assist monster to an extra monster zone, except during the damage step, you can equip up to three Marin Assist link monsters with different names from your graveyard to that link monster, and it powers it up by 600, that's 1,800, so that's going to be 2,000 attack complete. Um, to be honest, if your opponent can knock this card off the field, the deck loses its 
primary power play, and that's you can see how it can really affect the deck. I mean, the Paleozoic Frog version of the deck can put up some good defense with disruption in the form of the Paleozoic back row, as well as the constant totally awesome every turn. I mean, yeah. So, it's... it. The power play will crumble, but it does have defenses, so you gotta... And if you can play on those defenses, yeah, the deck it isn't gonna be Tier 1. Definitely gonna be Tier 2. Um, ultimately. Going to the Gladiator Beast stuff. I mean, I love it when uh, car, we get legacy support from older R-types. Gladiator Beast was definitely a competitive deck back in the day, and just seeing more support for it does warm my heart that it could potentially be pretty awesome. I've seen deck builds online as well as videos showcasing these new cards, and I can tell you right now, definitely something that you want to keep on your, on your radar. I would say this is going to be at least a Tier 2 deck um, going forward. I mean, I could be wrong. It could be higher, 1.5. Um, but here we go. We got Sagittarius, which is basically a draw power for the card. Discard a Gladiator Beast card, and then you draw two cards. Um, ultimately, Draw a power more consistency from the deck that it needs it. I mean, we have Adorex here, which is basically the NR type version of Elemental Hero Prisma, which used to be one in the deck. Um, so definitely something that you want to be playing in your deck. Vespius is another card. This is a linchpin card, and it's needed to go out um, and into your new fusion monster. We'll get into the in the in the bit, but this card can be brought out during your battle phase, or during the damage step, excuse me, um, whenever another Gladiator Beast monster battles a monster. So, yeah. Pretty big here. Man. And then, what was it? If this could show something out by the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster, all monsters you control gain 500 extra attack. So, it's either you call out during the beginning of the battle step for a little extra damage during that thing, or you summon off of Gladiator Beast effect and your power boosts everything. Alright, so yeah, it's a pretty handy card. Something to definitely look into picking up for the deck. And then, of course, you have the fusion here. Bringing this guy out. 3,500 attack. Huge attack. And not only that, but it also has a quick effect where you can negate and destroy monster effects, which is awesome. And then you're basically forcing your opponent to attack whatever you want it to attack. So you can force your opponents to crash into this guy with 3,500 attack. Yeah. Definitely something I can see setting up. Um, overall, my thoughts in this deck, I mean, it's a solid set. Um, um, it gives support to a lot of different art types, introduces Unchained to the, um, to the game. So definitely, I'm going to say it's a good set. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the best, but it does do what it does and it does it well. I'm a little disappointed in not getting much out of Link Frames. I think we got all the first at Dragon. This comes out of the Link Frames edition, which was like a special edition version of the first pack or something like that. Um, so, all right, we get something out of the Link Frames, but we don't get anything else out of Link Frames too, which is disappointing in my opinion. But, um... That Konami still consider is actually going to be doing the alternate version of this prismatic secret rares, what a lot of people are calling all their alternate secret rares. Um, so yeah, they're continuing that with this set. I mean, those cards are already been released. You know, those they're going to be very expensive because they are very short, short printed. Um, typically, usually one out of every couple cases. So, definitely something to keep your eyes on going forward. If you pull one, hey, lucky you. I mean, if I pull one, uh, you can expect a link to my eBay page selling it. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that. Um, but guys, it is a pretty good set. Um, whether or not you want to pick up and invest in a seal box, that really depends on your situation, whether it be budget or if you have a YouTube channel like myself. I am definitely am going to be doing an opening for this set. Um, so I am going to be picking up a box. I'm not sure if I'm going to be picking up more than one at once. Um, definitely picking up um, one to show you guys what I pull. 
Um, that's for sure. Uh, whether I go higher, that's up in the air right now. If your budget doesn't allow you to do a box, definitely pick up this card you want to pick up out of it. Um, I would definitely maybe possibly wait uh, a few weeks uh, and see how the meta settles um, when going after secret rares, uh, to be honest. But outside of that, do what you need to do with your budget. All right, that's the best ev advice I can give anybody. Um, if you want to go for a sale product, go for it. If you want singles, go for that. But otherwise, enjoy the cards you get. All right? The game's all about having fun. That's the most important thing. All right? So, guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this on my channel, make sure to subscribe. Enable notifications, especially YouTube notifications, so you don't miss a single upload. Guys, check out the description box below. Find the invite link to my channel. Join the conversation on Discord. We'd love to have you. Follow me on Twitter at bystanderx79, guys. Until next time, as always, peace.